Hello, I'm in uh, Central Park again. I'm kind of uh, moving from place to place. The cat sit I was in for a couple of weeks is ended. I have all my stuff with me, my guitar and my backpack with all my crap in it. And uh, yeah, it, uh, it's, uh, yeah, anyway, I'm done at the cat sit. And I wanted to talk about a movie. I don't normally talk about movies, but uh, since I just uh, read A Matter of Conviction by Evan Hunter, uh, I noticed that the movie version uh, a mat uh, um, called The Young Savages was available for me to see, and um, I watched it. Now, I'm uh, pretty sure I saw this movie you know, over 50 years ago. So uh, I uh, watched it again and uh, it's really pretty good. It's uh, by uh, directed by John Frankenheimer and it's uh, Lancaster, uh, Burt Lancaster's in it and Dana Merrill and Shelley Winters. And uh, it's actually quite good. It's in black and white. It's um, from 1961, so it came out uh, a couple years after the book. The book uh, re was released. So once again, this is you know this is how, how, as I was saying on the last video about how Evan Hunter uh, did really well in the movies for a few years, and then I think there was a sort of a, a pause. Maybe uh, some of the uh, uh, Ed McBain stuff. I don't know, but um, I'm not that up on the Ed McBain story, but, uh, which is his pen name for the crime novels he wrote. So, uh, but you know, later, uh, how I first became aware of, uh, Evan Hunter was the movie last summer, which was in theaters when I was a, uh, you know, when I was like 20, uh, well, when I was still in high school, I guess. So I saw that and really liked it. And uh, that's how I got into Evan Hunter and then started reading the books at the Catsit because my, uh, the Catsit client has, uh, has the books. So um, the movie was uh, pretty much a direct adaptation of the book. I <laughs> forgot to mention that in the book, uh, in the book, you know, where, where you uh, are talking to someone and they're going to tell you a story about something that happened before. Uh, well, you know, they might just sort of tell it. But in the book, it goes very scenario like, like dialogue, 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 paragraphs. Then it, it, it goes, you know, tell me the story. And then the character, uh, it uh, has a little gap. And then there's like a screen uh, action uh, descriptions like this is what the scene is, this is what's going on, and then it's all in dialogue what happened in that scene. So, so that was all set up by the uh, writer originally. And I, when I was reading the book, I was thinking, my God, this is just really ready to go direct from the page onto the screen, and that's more or less what they did. Um, some things have changed. Um, there is a situation where uh, there's a, uh, one of the murderers is about teen uh, juvenile delinquents, three teens uh, that are Italian um, murder uh, a Puerto Rican uh, kid who is blind. So, um, so there's the, the scene with the, the uh, uh, Mary uh, that, that is, and oh, Mary, uh, the, the, one of the kids' mothers had a relationship with the prosecutor when he used to live in the neighborhood because he was Italian originally and uh, changed his name. His father changed his name to non-Italian. At least that's the way it was in the movie. I don't remember how it was in the book. So, um, so the, uh, the uh, uh, prosecutor... Um, Oh, all, how all that is dealt with in the uh, movie is a lot different because in the book, uh, 
the Mary, uh, the, the, the woman he used to have a relationship with, had sent him a Dear, Dear John letter while he was in the service because she met another guy. And in the movie, that guy was a bad guy. So she's by herself. So she's like single in the book. That guy is a good guy and has a shop somewhere and to stick with them. And, you know, it's uh, it's not, you know, it's not at all like like it is in the book where she's she's alone and available, which puts a little bit more uh, dramatic tension between Burt Lancaster character and the Shelley Winters character was like, well, they're going to restart their, you know, thing. But, you know, none of that really goes on. So, um, what else? Yeah, these, the, it's, uh, you know, pretty much a straight adaptation. The, uh, there's this guy, John Chandler, who plays the main punk, who, who, uh, who looks really punkish and really looks good. And, uh, oh, the, uh, the wife gets terrorized by the gang, um, in the book, she does not get terrorized by the gang, I don't think at all. Uh, whereas in the uh, in the movie, there's a scene in an elevator where they uh, they threaten her with the switchblade. So, uh, but that and they beat up uh, the prosecutor, uh, like in the book, and beating up really good. And uh, and that is done in the movie in a pretty fake looking uh, subway uh, set. So um, that's all done on the subway. Um, as I said, you know, there's excellent location shooting in this movie. It's, you know, it's whatever, shot in 1960 in, uh, in New York City uh, and probably Hollywood, some of these other sets. But, uh, you know, the New York stuff on the street is really great, particularly like a, a funeral scene of the blind kid uh, where, you know, the, it's coming down the avenue, they're having a procession down a, a street, and there's all these people lining the street, so I don't know what, the, how they, uh, organized all that, but, you know, it's like, I don't think they paid for all these people as extras, and there's other scenes like that, where there's lots of stuff going on the streets, it fe felt really kind of authentic at the very beginning, when, uh, they walked through the, through, um, through, through Harlem going to uh, murder uh, the kid. I don't know exactly where it was actually shot, but there is a, a shot of the Upper Park Avenue, which I showed in the previous video. Um, so, it, you know, it looked like it looks like it looks. So I guess it was really shot up in Harlem somewhere. The reason I watched the movie is because I found that uh, image of uh, the alternative uh, paperback book uh, which um, is t still titled The Matter of Conviction, but has all this um, movie stuff. You know, it's definitely the movie tie-in with the stars of the movie and the whole bit, but yet that is not the one they ultimately went with and the t title they ultimately went with. So they, uh, so, you know, somebody met, went into all this production to produce this uh, and apparently printed some of the books and so I don't you know I don't know if there's actual release of a number of the books but um, anyway when I found that to do the little thumbnail for my other video the previous video uh, I thought oh I should watch the movie and then then I looked it up matter of conviction movie and oh yeah right it's the uh, the young savages which is of course a uh, Kind of a sexy savage sort of name you know not so legalistic as a matter of conviction so i guess that's kind of it i have to go to work uh in a little bit i came left the cat sit early to come down and talk to you a little bit and then i'm gonna go to uh do my uh little job uh i'm sitting underneath some kind of evergreen uh, in Central Park here, and it has these little balls, little green uh, balls, uh, seed balls of some sort. If you can see that, uh, but that's kind of a, I've never seen these before. Yeah, it's sort of a odd evergreen. I like it. It's uh, maybe it's a redwood or something. See how they're sort of reddish in the bark of the tree. So, uh, 
No, I really do wonder what kind of tree this is. I mean, it is the bark. It does look kind of red in there. Is this a, a red redwood? See that up there? Maybe some can, somebody could tell me. I know there's an app. I can look this up anyway, but uh, I'm not going to do that. In the movie, the music was written by David Amram. And uh, David Amram is still around. So the movie was, you know... David Amram was born in 1930. He's quite a, a New York figure. He's still around. He still performs. And he wrote... Uh, scores for the Manchurian Candidate and for a couple of uh, Eli Kazan movies, uh, The Wonderful uh, Splendor in the Grass, and uh, The Arrangement, which I haven't seen. So, um, and he did The Manchurian Candidate too. So, so David Amaram did the score of this and only just, you know, only, uh, only, you know, they don't use very much music, but what is there is nice. It's very a David Amram ish, uh, and uh, yeah. So he also did "Pull My Daisy," the uh, Robert Frank movie that's very famous that has Jack Kerouac uh, doing the reading the uh, narration. Well, thanks for watching my stuff. I guess I was gonna I was gonna talk about carrying the guitar uptown all the time and. Uh, you know, the guitar stuff is kind of over. And I have to admit that I'm just kind of done. I don't like to play and sing in these apartments because I know the neighbors can sing and I can hear. So it kind of it kind of ruined what I had when I arrived to New York oh, uh, over uh, 50 years ago, 40 years ago. When I arrived in New York 40 years ago, I was capable of playing all these songs uh, like for four sets a night and knew all these songs and now I hardly can play anything and I don't have my voice uh, properly uh, set where it should be so I can sing well and uh, you know I think I just have to have to let that uh, let that be and realize that that's sort of over so anybody want a nice cheap acoustic guitar it's really kind of acoustic electric in New York, you know, I don't know. As far as plot and as far as plot and all that, the uh, the movie is uh, kind of ties everything up at the end a little bit, a little bit more. So we get the guys, the three guys uh, standing there who were on trial, and we get what what their their sentence is. I don't think we get to the sentencing in the book. We just know that uh, they're not going to get they're not going to burn in the electric chair. And, you know, really that's all that's important. The movie is really more about the prosecutor, uh, the Burt Lancaster character in the movie and about his, um, his family issues and his issues with trying to convict these guys when, uh, you know, he, he uh, was involved with a woman and he, having concerns about, uh, you know, children in the area, whatever. It's, um, it's uh, the book and the movie come out quite early 60s liberal uh which is you know it's not it's not the boy's fault it's society's fault that kind of thing where i don't think we see that sort of take on stuff quite so much in the 21st century but that was that was the way uh we felt about it back then uh when we were nicer people i guess so yeah it was not uh, not really the boy's fault it's the whole society and how we live and how they left to live in the and the slums and all that kind of uh, all that kind of stuff. So uh, we'll speak later. Thanks for watching.